Did you know the use of contraceptives will not make you infertile, let alone cause any birth defects or alter your body system? These are myths and misconceptions held by prospective users. So if you're one of them, this episode is for you. Today's episode, we're going to dispel some myths and misconceptions held about uh, contraceptives and modern child spacing method. Together, we are going to dispel all the myths. So sit back, relax, and I welcome you to today's episode. I am Ola Sumbo Mudupe. Please stay tuned, we'll be right back.
Thanks for staying with us. It's still Contraceptive Matters with DKT Nigeria. And I'm Mola Sumbo Mudukwe. This program is made possible by DKT Nigeria, one of the largest and private providers of reproductive health products and child spacing method in the country. And what we do is we try to encourage sexually active persons to embrace smart and informed and perhaps healthy choice when we talk about uh, reproductive health. And today, before we went on that break, um, I said we are looking at myths and misconceptions about the contraceptive, some myths held by uh, members of the public. And together uh, with my guest, Dr. Queen, um, um, Dr. Queen Amina Biobaku. I don't know, Lara. I'm so used to Lara these days. Dr. Queen Amina Biobaku, she's sitting close to me. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. And Omolara um, Luko, she's the media and communications manager with DKC Nigeria. Thank you. Queen Amina is, a, is our in house doctor. So, together today, we are going to dispel some myths and misconceptions about contraceptives. So, before we start, um, I'm sure you've, you're a medical practitioner, you've heard one or two myths and misconceptions mm -hmm. that you're so marveled or surprised at. Okay, why would you say that? Um, one of our viewers said, um, wants to know if contraceptives truly makes you, um, contraceptive makes you gain weight. Okay, like most of monals, we've talked about this several times, there could be weight gain or mm -hmm. weight loss, basically. So people really swing on both sides and people, some people don't even have such a you know significant change in their body weight so there are some expectations and like i always say i said once on this show that one of my senior colleagues said asked if you'd ever met a woman whose mouth was padlocked <laughs> and she got hormonal contraception and she was just blowing up without ever <laughs> eating anything or you had your teeth locked so that means that sometimes you most times your lifestyle also comes in it could, could be we stress respond, yes it could be stress it could be a mouthful of eat you're eating it could be you're not sleeping well you know, certain, but we do know that hormones impact us differently. Just like some women get pregnant, some add weight, some lose weight to different extents. So as much as possible, you maintain a healthy lifestyle, exercise what you eat while you're on your hormonal contraceptive. And if you've done everything, like we always say, there's always an option. That's why there are options. If you've done everything and you see that you're having difficulty achieving that size that, you know, boosts you've your self-confidence, talk to, to your health practitioner and another option will always be made. Okay, okay. does it make you infertile? Because that's a regular <laughs> word. Uh, yes, it's, it's actually the regular one. And you even see men, most men now will call and say, oh, I really want my wife to do it. But one of our major concerns is the fact that uh, it will make her not to be able to conceive again. And, you know, I usually tell them that basically what contraception does in the body is to prevent pregnancy for that period in time that you're using it. Once it is out of your system, once you take it out, or once you stop taking them, maybe if, if they are the uh, daily pills, or once the expiration period of that of any particular method you pick, once the expiration period has come, then your body returns back to status quo. You don't say because you want to um, get pregnant, let's say next month, okay. you have to wait till next month. It depends. No, it, it, that would it depend depends on, on the method. That would depend on the method that you are using. Mm -hmm. You know, we will usually advise that once you speak with your healthcare practitioner, mm -hmm. discuss with them the you know the type the of time spacing frame. you are looking for, mm -hmm. so that both of you can work together mm -hmm. on the best method that will suit that spacing period mm -hmm. that you want to do. Mm -hmm. But basically, contraception doesn't cause infertility. You know, if you look at it, I, I, I'll tell people that when now uh, they're okay. Le, le, let me let me bring in this scenario on a radio show on Thursday. A woman called, and she was like, "Oh." that uh, despite the fact that you guys are talking about contraception and uh, people are still having so many unplanned pregnancy, there mm -hmm. are still some people, Absolutely. you know, that are battling with infertility. Mm -hmm. What do we do about those set of mm -hmm. people? You know, and I usually tell people that some, you know, if the, the about 90% of these people that are, you know, you know, looking for babies that are, you know, are, are going through infertility period one way or the other, most of them have never come Ever. in contact with contraception Absolutely. and okay. yet they have you know you know that kind of challenge mm -hmm. that they are facing mm -hmm. so basically i'll tell people contraception is just to prevent pregnancy mm -hmm. for that period in time that mm -hmm. you are using it mm -hmm. once you are done mm -hmm. you are okay people believe that uh, it starts in the system I've seen people say, oh, because I use it while I was uh, single, now I'm married, it is the repercussion. And I tell people, no, 
it is it not. It be something else. It is something else. That's why we say, oh, it is always good for you to go do your checkup with your doctor for them to be sure that everything is perfect with you as a woman. Okay. Do you need a form of birth control if you're breastfeeding? Because the idea is if you're on exclusive breastfeeding, mm -hmm. you're safe. Well, hmm. that we have natural contraception. Just like Lara was talking about, um, something's not been in your body forever. This methods we're talking about, we've been talking about are temporary, they're reversible methods, they're permanent methods, but these are all reversible. So we also have what we call lacteria, um, lactational amenorrhea method, which is mm -hmm. what breastfeeding does for you. So if you're a woman, you just had a baby the first six months and you are actively breastfeeding, not expressing to give that baby up. They are breastfeeding during the day, they are breastfeeding for several hours at night for the first six months actively. There's some protection. Okay. And then remember we keep saying there's no 100% effective method except abstinence. So there's still a risk, but you're covered for that period okay. to a large extent. After that period, you're on your own if you're still depending <laughs> on, on that. your own. <laughs> if you're breastfeeding. <laughs> so you should consider other things. But we'll say even in the first six months with active breastfeeding day and night, uh, it's always safer to still have some other backup method. Remember that when you combine methods, you have closer it's to 100%. Effective. Yes, effective. Yes. Okay. Contrac is it true that contraceptives encourage um, pro mistreaty? Uh, in fact, Especially that is, for uh, uh, single sexually active okay. uh, people out there. Okay, that is going to be, in fact, we're going to have a debate on that particular one. Because I've <laughs> had, yes, yes, the reason why I say so, I've had uh, people, men, you know, challenge me on different programs. Mm -hmm. Madam, this thing you are, you are talking encouraging about, promiscuity. you are encouraging promiscuity. And you will also see men, even women, call and say, oh, thank you for, you know, talking about these things. Because when you talk about it, it helps us to put in place, you know, our things that we don't want to run foul of. So let me just put it this way. The, uh, the hormones in some of the, um, or in some of the hormonal method doesn't have anything to do with your sexual libido. It doesn't have to, it's, it's, not, it's not sexual booster. Exactly. It's not something that will boost that once you, for example, once you take uh, the DKT press now, the three monthly injection, once you take it, you now start going. Because I've seen a man <laughs> come and say, Madam, the injection, somebody took it in my area and she has gone there while I said, Sir, is, uh -uh. are you sure is this injection? I said, Yes, now. And was, I, you know, what I told the man was the fact that it is in our head. Mm -hmm. It is more of psychology mm -hmm. that, oh, that once she can't get pregnant because mm -hmm. she's protected, mm -hmm. she will not begin to know. Mm -hmm. it, is not, it is not so. Mm -hmm. There is no hormone in any of this hormonal contraception that will boost your sexual libido, that will not make a woman to go out and begin to do all sorts of things. So basically, okay. it's actually a very big myth without a fat behind it. I also want to put in that remember that pregnancy is just one of the things you're thinking about if you're someone who is going all over the place. We're talking about sexually transmitted infections. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you're on an injectable or you have a coil does not Doesn't protect you from all that. Yes. And even with the barrier methods, the condom, there are other sexually transmitted infections you can catch even when you think you're all covered because there's still some exposure mm -hmm. and still some contact. And there are things like lice, like warts, you know, wow. that you can pick off people's skins and still, are still sexually transmitted infections. So like Lara said, some of people even complain of reduced libido. So you might even mm. say, please take it so that you will not go <laughs> around. <laughs> <All right. laughs> What you are being given at home will be a no. Yeah, no. You know? <laughs> but it's not about that. We're giving you information so you can make informed choices so that you can plan your life and then have a better quality of life at the end of the day. Yes. Okay, so is it true that newer forms of birth control are not as safe as uh, the old methods? Well, we used to have forms are safer, really, because you find out that most of the side effects that we used to hear about that were so severe, the newer form, let's talk about DKT Press, for example, yes. compared to the more traditional brand, the amount of hormone in it is even much reduced. And that's why even the way it's given, the other one, injection, is giving the muscle more painful. This is given right under the skin, the fat, a smaller needle, less pain, such that you can even mm -hmm. give yourself mm -hmm. if you are taught how to administer it. And you find out that, you know, even when we talk about the um, implants, you know, the um, in Planon NXT, return to facility now is faster because you don't have such a large amount of hormone to do the same thing anymore. So it's more tolerable, return is better, side effects are, you know, milder, so to speak. So the newer forms, technology makes things better, 
in a lot of ways, okay? Mm -hmm. So because of the newer forms, less hormone needed, the methods of um, administering them are, you know, modified. You find out that they are more tolerable. So no, um, okay. the newer methods are easier to administer and more tolerable generally. Um, does barrier method um, diminish um, one's pleasure? <laughs> No, it's one of the myths we have know, here. I know, you know, the fact that um, you see people say it, and they say it with all confidence. They say that they're talking from experience. Yes, they say that see, they have facts to back it up. It makes me, you know, laugh. It makes me like <laughs> you, you don't mean it, and they would, be, you know, they would be arguing with all seriousness. With all seriousness. But if you look at it, what are the barrier methods that we are talking about? We are talking about the male and the female condom. Talking about the diaphragm. Okay. So basically, if you look at it, let's look at the male condom, for example. You know, uh, before, before now, I will go back to the older method mm -hmm. that Dr. Amina just talked mm -hmm. about. She talked about the fact that the newer methods are improvements mm -hmm. on the older forms. Mm -hmm. Meaning that before, that you have just one variant. That it is without this particular uh, type of condom, you mm -hmm. can't do anything. But now you have variants. You have mm -hmm. spices. You have things that can help you spice, spice up, your, up. Yes, your reproductive, your sexual life. Mm -hmm. Talking about the, uh, the Fiesta now, the Fiesta mm -hmm. brand of uh, the barrier method. Mm -hmm. Talking about the, uh, the chocolate, mm -hmm. the strawberry. The Talking ribs, about the dotted. Yes, they yeah. rib the dotted. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, when I went to Ibadan and I was discussing with, uh, I was discussing with someone, it was on hair, and a man called and he said, no, the barrier method, no, 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 no. I don't want to use it, it diminishes. I said, sir, I'm, I want to You want to recommend them. Yes, I want to bend with you. I said, please variant. use this particular variant. Mm -hmm. Call back next week and give me a feedback. You won't believe it, the man called on her. I said, madam, I take it back. <laughs> I said, he said, yes, he said he takes it back. So you know, the fact that you don't know about some things okay. doesn't mean they are not in existence. The truth mm -hmm. is the, uh, the Fiesta or condom comes in 12 exciting variants. Mm -hmm. Go online, go to onionbanana.com, see the different variants, see the one that suits your lifestyle. Experiment with some. Then I believe that after the experimentation, you will come back and change that soon that no, it's actually <laughs> here itself. Play you. Okay, so please may I add something? Okay, please so, do. To that question, I'm not going to disregard that. For some people, it diminishes the sensitivity, depending on the brand you use, like yes, Larry yes. said. And some people, that's what they want. Because some people that have premature ejaculation because of overexcitement and all that find that that um, desensitization helps them to go mm -hmm. longer. And of course, we've also had that with DK2, we put that in mind with our prolonged. Prolong, okay? yes. Because that is particular for those who want that mm -hmm. benefit. So what you think may be is, um, a downside, some people mm -hmm. find that Could an be upside. An advantage. And if what you want is, oh, no, I don't want this, she has said it all, mm -hmm. you have brands out there that you could pick you can up adopt. that address that part. Okay. Does your body need a break if you're on any form of birth control? Yes. Okay, so uh, the okay. fact that people believe it stores in the system. Mm -hmm. And the truth is, it does not store up in your system. You know, the break we are talking about, is it the break that you want to have a baby? Maybe. Well, yes, because most of this method, they actually have their year or well, the year they are going to stay in your system. Mm -hmm. For example, you, you want to space for two years. You can go for the implant that will serve you for three years. And we usually also say that this method are not necessarily supposed to stay in your system up to the year of expiration. A okay. woman called and said, oh, I have an implant on, it's five years, but I'm mm -hmm. ready to get pregnant. I, I want to, uh, am I going to wait for five years? I said, no. You don't have to wait You don't the have end. to wait because they are not permanent mental, because they are reversible. All you need to do is go back to the clinic, tell the doctor, please take it out. I'm ready to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, it doesn't store up in the system. So I wouldn't now know why people would believe that I really need that break, except you are ready to get pregnant. Okay. Okay, but I want to add that? on something as well. You know, we're talking about older, more traditional methods compared to the newer, newer ones. ones. Now, when we talk about hormonals, especially the injectables, if you were on the older more common traditional methods, what people are a little mm -hmm. more familiar with, the mm -hmm. KT came on the scene, okay? We usually do advise that if you've been on it for quite a while, 
you switch to some other method. And the major reason is because it can have an impact on bone health. Basically, some women, some, not all, start to, but that's the traditional method. And that's the advantage of the newer methods that we have available now, because less hormone, less side effects. You do not have to worry about, oh, they said, oh, I read somewhere, I saw online, someone had an experience, oh, I was in the UK or the US. And my doctor actually said, most of those things, if you want to be honest and you check those records, they're about the older traditional methods because mm -hmm. of the amount of hormone and impacts they have on you know calcium reabsorption so, and all of that so it's either you're having supplementation or you take it for a certain number of years and then you switch to another method that's why there are options which is the great thing so the newer methods are, are the ones and to you explore. don't just adopt any exactly. any type yes. just because yes. your friend yes. is yes. on it's a particular method there are over the counter methods emergency pill post pill barrier methods the condoms right. that you can take but most of the other methods whether the oral contraceptives, injectables, you know, the implants, the IUD, you need to talk to a healthcare practitioner to ensure that it's the right one for you and you just adopt and it doesn't, you know, push you into something of well, you start blaming the method. But the real truth is that you shouldn't have even been on it in the first place. Okay. Another major myth we have around contraception causes birth defects. So no, no studies have proven that, um, contraceptives, even when you are found to be pregnant, because usually you find out that before we give you a method, we do a pregnancy test. Not because it will harm the baby, but it defeats the purpose. You understand what I'm saying? If you're saying that I don't want to get pregnant, you're already pregnant, then what are you trying to do? And if you think that, oh, my taking it will push out the baby, you'll be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, is, that is one of the myths about the, the emergency yeah. pills. <laughs> People believe that, you know, they, they come to you and say, oh, if I take emergency pill, mm. can it help terminate a pregnancy? No, so it's true. No. Enjoyment so minister. <laughs> Even those who have coils in that were not put in properly or were displaced and they got pregnant, you find out that they carry the baby to term. A friend of mine told me the, the baby had you know, the coil. You hear all that. But of course, the baby's a small space. Baby is trying to come out of the world. Well, it's going to is pull it true? Everything have out. you ever experienced well, that? It can pull it out. Remember that babies come, they clutch everything <laughs> in the space. So a baby is trying to be born, it's coming all out. It's going to drag everything. Everything. alongside so whatever is close to come with the baby doesn't mean the baby was like you know like mommy i caught it. <laughs> it doesn't mean that but it doesn't okay. it doesn't cause birth defects you know except for some reason maybe you had something with copper the baby you had in also had a copper allergy you find out that it will not be the baby won't even come to term to that effect in the first place so no no um, clear lines connecting contraceptive use in birth okay birth. is it true it disorganizes the menstrual cycle Okay, um, we'll say that, um, I'll start by saying one of the side effects with some of the hormonal method is the fact that you have menstrual changes. Absolutely. And it is normal because it's a strange thing that is coming into the system. So it takes the system some time to adjust to it. Okay. But once the system adjusts to it, you can be sure, especially for the daily pills now, you can be sure that, oh, it will help regularize. You go back to your normal system. But talking about menstrual changes now, uh, it could be the fact that it's either you don't menstruate at mm -hmm. all. That's also a change. Mm -hmm. You've been menstruating before, and you pick up a method, and you realize that why you're But most women are always worried about the fact that they don't they are not menstruating or not seeing the period doctor if the blood storing somewhere i know that's where some boys come to doctor we have to run so many times if if, if, you, if if a woman should tell you i excuse me i have not seen my period in the last two months doctor what is wrong so if a woman tells me that it's a like cause I always of say, concern a woman i want to be sure she's not pregnant i'm sure she's not pregnant she doesn't have any other complaints i'm going to reassure her because i found out especially in our parts of the world women are tied to their period it's a very intimate relationship when they don't see they really miss it and they worry and then maybe because the system has been programmed to I do that because most of the time the way um, we're cultured and the way we are brought up we really don't understand what the period is we don't understand how it comes you know, that's why you would think a woman who is in menopause is now sick, so the man wants to run away from if her, I, that, that she don't doctor, have intimacy with her that anymore. Going to be I'm going to catch for, something it's going to for, be another another for another day. So yes, unfair. We have to dis it's so unfair because, yes. in fact, I've seen men yes. about two or three weeks now, older men yes. calling me to say, Madam, Seriously, my wife no is in menopause, how I'm not going to touch her. Yes. In fact, some men like will say, I want to, yes. Some men will say, I want to touch, but the woman says, no. Where would the spermatozoa be storing up? <laughs> <laughs> you know, so basically, you have to realize that a woman's life is in phases. And when you're on some method, just like when you're pregnant, you can't say a pregnant woman is sick or she's dying. It's a phase in a woman's life. So you're on 
this is a hormonal method that puts your body in a particular phase, you know, that your body may naturally have been in another situation. And it's not, if you find, okay, let me try to um, find a way to explain it. The way your menstruation comes every month, an egg is released, your womb starts to pad up with vessels, nourishment, hoping to have a fertilized egg so that will nourish that egg as the baby is growing till the placenta is formed and takes over nourishment. Mm -hmm. When that doesn't happen, that shedding, that whole part does not take off. place. So depending on how much shedding it was, it may be a little, it may be a little, it may be more, depending on how your body works. Mm -hmm. So when you take this method, the way the circle works, you don't have that padding. So there's no period. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing. And sometimes when you spot, it may just be a little that has accumulated over time. So occasionally you expect spotting because it has accumulated over months. After a while, it has to break down. So it may not be a lot, but you see some spotting. So basically, so it's not, there's no way you can, it's a tight space. No way something will accumulate, you won't notice that. It's fat you are seeing, you think your tummy is big. So you found say, this is injection. Found your tummy will be, most times it's fat. If it is blood, there will be pain, it will get infected. There will be a lot of issues. You know that it's a medical emergency here. So no. And like Lara said, they are temporary. When you go off these methods, yes, even when going off it for some, especially the older traditional methods, you may find out that might be some irregularities as your body is trying to return. Maybe heavier bleeding or spotting. But over time, it goes back to the usual circle that you used to have, basically. Okay. <laughs> it's still conversation <laughs> matters with DKT Nigeria. And we've been discussing myths and misconceptions. We've tried to dispel some myths and misconceptions about uh, modern child spacing methods and contraceptives that we have out there. And I have with me Dr. Queen Amina Biobak, who are a regular doctor and Omolara Luko, the media and communications manager with DKT Nigeria. Please, if you have one or two questions about today's topic or any other reproductive health uh, topic we have out there, please log on to www.onionbanana.com or send your question to DKT's toll-free short code. That's 38350. Type your question, space, RHS, to 38350. Type your question, you space, type RHS in caps, to 38350. A doctor will call you back immediately. You can also call 0090279018 after the show. That's our direct line. Um, call 0090279018 after the show. We take a short break now. When we return, we receive some calls and read some WhatsApp messages. Please stay with us. The program continues shortly.
Thanks for staying with us. It's so contraceptive matters with DKC Nigeria. And today we are looking at myths and misconceptions about uh, contraceptives. Um, so far in the first half of the, during the first half of the program, we've been able to dispel some myths and misconceptions about uh, contraceptives. Myths and misconceptions held by members of the public or prospective users. And um, if you have one or two messages or one or two myths or misconceptions you've held in the past about a particular method, please share it with us. Call 0908-929-6673. 0908-729-6673. That's the phone line. Or send WhatsApp messages to 0809 0809 279018. Please send WhatsApp messages only on that line 0090279018 or call 0908-729-6673. And I have with me um Dr. Queen Hamina Biobaku, a regular doctor, a regular in-house doctor. She's been helpful. She's been dispelling some myths, some myths that I held about. Um, these methods out there and Omolara Luko, the media and communications manager with DKC Nigeria. Okay, I think we have our first call. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. We lost that. Please call back again. Call 0908-729-6673. 0908-729-6673. Or send WhatsApp messages to 0809-0279-018. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. What's your name, please? Joy. Joy. Joy, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Agodo. Magodo. Thanks for calling, Joy. What's your question? Agodo. Agodo. Where is Agodo? I am in Lagos. In Lagos. Iyano Woro side. Okay. Thanks for calling, Joy. So, Joy, go ahead. Hello, Joy. Oh, Joy, are you there? Hello, good afternoon. We lost Joy. Hello, good afternoon. What's your name, please? Welcome to the show. Can you please speak up a bit? Please speak up a bit. We can hardly hear what you're saying. Hello? Since we lost our call again. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the show. What's your name, please? Me, Mr. Wally from Obalinde. Mr. Wally from Obalinde. Please lower the volume of your TV set. Okay. Are you through with that? Yes. What's your What's your question? Your wife just put to bed. Did I get you right? Like three months ago. Three months ago, okay. Okay. Your wife put to bed three months ago as she has not seen her period. Breastfeeding. Is she breastfeeding? Yes. Exclusively. Strict breastfeeding. No is she breastfeeding? Food. Is she? I hope she's not giving the baby any um, formula. Any other milk? Okay. Is okay. she breastfeeding the baby alone? Yes. yes okay. okay. Yes, thank you, Mr. Wally. Is that yes. all? Yes. All right. Thank you for calling, Mr. Wally from Obalinde. All right. All right. Stay tuned, please. So, Mr. Wale, your wife, um, we expect women who are on exclusive breastfeeding, most of them, a lot of women, while well breastfeeding even, don't see their period at all. I've seen women who don't even see their period till they stop. That's when the child is over a year, no period at all. But it doesn't stop that woman from getting pregnant. I've seen women who got pregnant less than eight weeks after <laughs> they just had a baby. It's rare, but it does happen. So, if she's, she may be on exclusive breastfeeding, she's not seeing her period, please... Take her to your healthcare <laughs> practitioner to counsel her on a family planning method. It's very important. Otherwise, you find out a lot, especially with the first baby, you see a lot of first and second.
kids. They are very close <laughs> together. Usually not planned. Be like the woman twins. just knows I'm covered and she's shocked to find out she's pregnant, she's pregnant again. at the end so, of the day. Um, I will not say, oh, all is well. Don't worry about it because she may be pregnant. The only way to know is to have her checked and then to get counseled about your options like you've heard all we've been talking about and then she will be advised on an option to adopt so that you don't have another baby too soon before you're ready for that. Okay. And also, yeah, I think for him, the point, the, the concern there mm. now is the fact that the woman is not menstruating. Yes. Okay. So he's seeing it as, oh, there's no problem. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That, <laughs> you know, I did say that it's expected. Some women don't even, while breastfeeding or have, after having a baby, especially while you're breastfeeding, whether mm -hmm. exclusive, some exclusive, yes, some even while they add other feeds till the child is one, even if they breastfeed till two years. There's a way the hormones that body are, system yes, differs because of the stimulation of the breasts and all that. Some women do not get a period till that stops. So yes, there's no concern. If you are concerned that should I be worried she's not seeing her period, but the concern maybe she may be pregnant, pregnant. or may get pregnant soon. <laughs> so please. All right. So that. please call zero nine zero eight seven two nine six six seven three. Call zero nine zero eight seven two nine six six seven three, or send WhatsApp messages on zero eight zero nine zero two seven nine zero one eight. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Are you there? Wow. We lost that call. So, is it true barrier method associated with discomfort and irritation from lubricants okay, so, um, can cause any infection? Infection, well, I'll come to that. Really, most of the um, latex that is used for condoms are hypoallergenic, meaning that they really shouldn't cause you to have a reaction. But we also know that people are different. You may have a 0.1% chance okay, of being allergic. Hold your thought, doctor. I think we have a call. Hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. What's your name? Welcome to Contraceptive Matters. My name is Sheung. Sheung. Where are you calling from, Sheung? I'm calling from You're calling from Abiokuta? Yes. Wow. How is the rock city this afternoon? Mm. All right. What's your question, please, Sheung? I'm calling from Yes. What's your question, Sheung? Okay, what's your question? We got that. You're calling from Abiyokuta. What did you say? We didn't get that. Okay. Okay, is that all, Sheung? All right, thank you, Sheung, for calling. So we're talking about the barrier methods, the condom. Very okay. effective, very tolerable. The only people who may have complaints if you just happen, happen, which is rather rare, to be allergic to the latex, the rubber that is used to make the condom. And of course, when you have allergies, you can have rashes. Rashes, if not well treated, can get infected. Pus starts oozing out. But usually, most people tolerate it nicely. Now, okay. Sheung talked about the right time for a okay. woman to... Before you uh, okay. respond to Sheung's <laughs> question, hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. What's your name, please? Welcome to the show. What's your name, please? What is your You're watching Contraceptive Matters. What's your name? Okay, we lost that call. Okay, so please gather your thought before you call. So okay. It's time to start antenatal, really. Usually, as soon as a woman finds out she's pregnant, as she's been to the hospital, you may have a home pregnancy test. You go to the hospital, you do have a blood pregnancy test. Depending on the timing from your last menstrual period, usually we ask for an ultrasound scan because you may be pregnant. We need to know that that baby is alive and well. So if you're having what we call a transvaginal scan, we do it at about six weeks. If it's a normal scan. Okay. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Hello. Oh, we lost that call. If it's a normal trans abdominal scan, the common one. Hello, are you still there? Hello. Hello. Oh. Okay, doctor, please go ahead. About eight weeks. But, um, what we're looking at is to find out that that baby is fine. Can we pick a heartbeat? Okay. Now, new protocol. If the doctor on the scan, whatever type you try to do, picks a heartbeat, usually advise you register immediately. 
But you find that a lot of women want to wait till after three months before they register because the concerns are the first three months are the times most women may miscarry, maybe because of some abnormality in the formation of the child or something. You don't want to, you know, go through that, spend that money that may not be returned and then lose the baby. But it's best as soon as a heartbeat is picked to register immediately. That's the appropriate thing. Except some other we have another reason for doing that after three months, maybe due to your insurance plan, because some insurance plans will not allow you to do it till after three months. Okay, hello, good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What's your name, please? Welcome My to Contraceptive Ukaria. Matters. Your name is? Ukaria. Ukaria. Where are you calling Ukaria. from, Ukaria? I'm calling from Alakbere. Alakbere. Thanks for calling. What's your question? Please, I want to ask, is it possible for a woman not to see her um, period? Not period. Okay. Ovulation. Not to, not, see. Not, to not to see her yeah. ovulation. Do you yeah. see it? Or, uh, not to feel your ovulation. Do you or yeah. experience yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. Okay, you care, right? Is or that is all? It for a woman not yeah. to ovulate. Yeah. Okay, thanks for calling you, Okay, Doctor, so please. Because you don't see, <laughs> you don't see, you only experience or you, yes. Some women have a mid circle pain the same way some women have menstrual pain. So they actually can tell, oh, it's coming it's from coming. here this month, it's coming from there the next month, okay? But if she means that, is it possible for a woman not to ovulate? Yes, it's possible. You could have your periods and you think all is well and you're not ovulating, and ovulatory circles, basically. Okay. So, but usually if we see a woman who isn't having regular periods, we could almost guess that that woman may not be ovulating. But if you have concerns about that, please see your healthcare practitioner so that they help you determine if you're actually ovulating as you should. Okay, my name is Goodness Ajayi from Ijebode. What causes infection to keep returning after several treatments? So it depends on the kind of infection you're talking about. There are several infections and which parts is involved. So it's either it wasn't well treated in the first place. Some people start medications. And they didn't finish. Yes, they and they feel, oh, I'm better now. They stop. You know, then it comes back. And that is a dangerous position because later you start having resistance to the drugs mm -hmm. and it becomes even worse. So first, it's the infection identified, properly identified. Not that you just went to one chemist, I have this, I think I should buy that. You see a professional and then you get checked, you identify what it is, and whatever is found to be the right medication or method to treat it, you complete as you should, okay? And sometimes you may need to do a recheck, sometimes not all the time, but whatever measures your doctor advises, you make sure you complete. That usually should take okay. care of the Then also, I would like to have that, for that person that is having a recurring yeah. infection, the yeah. person should check the sexual yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. And do you have multiple partners? Oh, okay. Whatever yes. habits you need to, whatever that habit that are unhealthy, you, yeah. you need okay. to. Okay, yeah. we quickly need to take two messages before yeah. we go, because time is fast spent. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name is Betty from Mojo. I have tried the Provera injection for family planning and no resistance mm -hmm. injection, mm -hmm. but they both make me bleed. bleed. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do again. Well, ex <laughs> exactly. It's simple. Like we said, they are older brands. They are newer mm. brands with lesser hormones. So, like she said, TKT Press is an option. But well, she talks to your healthcare I'm practitioner. So there are so many options. Implants may just do you better. Implanting NXT may do better for you. Or you may do better than non hormonal generally. Mm. So, talk to your professional. Get counsel. There are several options. You have lots yeah, of options. These exactly. Are the so, after that, you may find out that. You know, you find something Okay, more, we need to, uh, to um, take this message from Kano. My name is Kulu. Please, when is it safe to have to be pregnant? When do I meet with my husband and when not? What is the circle calculation? Secondly, I sometimes have my period twice a month. Is it normal? That's from Kano. Okay, so I'll take this briefly. One, I'll still say talk to your healthcare professional. When you talk about when it's safe, you're talking about a safe and unsafe period. Yeah. If you do not have regular periods, you don't know when you're ovulating, it may be difficult to calculate. So get your um, circle recorded for three months. Take okay. it to your professional, your healthcare professional, who will guide you around that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, then um, she said something about seeing your period twice a month could depend on the length of your circle. If you have a short circle and it's a long month, you may actually see it twice a month. That's not a problem. But, you know, there may be other questions or answers you can't give us now. Talk to your healthcare professional, and I'm sure that will be sorted. Okay. This is where we say thank you. This is where we say our goodbyes. Thank you so much, um, Dr. Kwinamina Biobaku. Thank you, thank you so much, Omolara Luko. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much, our viewers. <laughs> Sheung from Abiokuta, Yukera from Alakbere, Kulu from Kano, 
goodness from Ijebu, the Joy Wale, and so many other people that try to call Tony from Lagos. You want to know about our website? Log on to www.onionbanana.com. www.onionbanana.com or send RHS space, type your questions to 38350. My name is Ola Sumbo Mudukwe. We have to go right now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.